I wish you'd been filming about eight minutes earlier. We would have heard five boxes of records tumble that were off balance. They had just come in and they weren't pl properly placed. And only about 40, so about 20 records broke. There was nothing major. Well, they had a very deep bass thunk because it was plastic boxes, one foot square, each weighing about 45 pounds. And then they hit this nice wood floor all solidly. And the records mostly fell out of the boxes. So you heard the boxes clang and the records all slithering out, all in one split second. Katunga! That's about all it did. Do you want to hear how one of them sounds on a Vic Troller from 1906? <clears throat> Historically, Woody Guthrie is captured on this recording. It's beautifully recorded and beautifully sung. I was just in love with music ever since I was a child. And I got to the point where I needed to uh, have a machine that would record so I could get things off the radio that the record stores didn't have. So while I was at it recording things for myself, I asked kids, how about I put How I the Moon and uh, nevertheless by the Mills Brothers on the same record, so you don't have to buy two records. And so I started selling records as a child, around 12 and 13. The principal caught me. <laughs> by the time I reached his office, the principal had already played one of my records. And he turned around and said, you know, this sounds awfully good. I don't think you should waste time with this aspect of your hobby. I want you to do something big, like record our Glee Club show, our Christmas play, sell records, put the money into better, better equipment, like plow it back, he actually said. So he put my name on the map at age 14, starting to commercialize, and it never stopped. I just have done nothing else but that for all these 60 years, roughly. Well, I was a good boy. I did all the chores at home, but then I would go to the drug stores or the grocery stores, and if I walked around, saw open garage doors, I would go near their trash man, uh, containers and look for those bottles that you can take in and get four or five cents redemption on. It helped me form my early recording studio. And I, I look forward to probably charting all the money from bottles that I grabbed out of people's garages. I later walked home from school every day and rang doorbells and, and asked for people if they wanted to sell old records. And they wouldn't re refuse a little nine or 10 year old boy. And I used to go up and see people's collections, just, you couldn't do this today. And you know what, half the time they gave them to me, I didn't have to buy them after all, even though I offered to, as a 10 year old. Well, I, I was very, very lucky to be alive when I was 15, I had a cancerous tumor in my throat, they took out the thyroid gland. When that surgery wasn't nearly as well perfected as it was 60 years later, the parathyroid glands that remained after surgery, they make calcium available to the optic nerve. None of them were active. And so my optic nerve swelled, they called it a popoledema, swelling of the optic nerve, and that took out the central vision, irrevocably. So I see all the stuff I do with peripheral vision, and, and I rarely bump into stuff in stores. But I, I cannot drive, and I certainly need ma very good magnification if I'm gonna read the printing on a record label. Why I love vinyl is I can even see uh, going to the shelf that this is gonna probably be a Mozart, yes, that's the Mozart violin and harpsichord sonatas, and I know the cover. I can look at it without even reading the big print, which I still can read. I would say that I utilize what hearing I am blessed with, which is very, very sharp hearing, even better, because I'm I rely on it for more things than just sitting down and hearing a radio or watching a television with audio. I, I listen to little squeaks, this and that, and know exactly what direction things are happening. And in that respect, I utilize the, the techniques of a really totally blind person. But I have the best of both worlds. I can see where I'm going and generally sort records by label and without even reading the print. Oh, but I sure hate loud noises. I, uh, I hate motorcycles, sirens, uh, loud baby crying in restaurants. Uh, I'm more bothered by things like that than most people. You should know one more thing. In this studio, it looks like a living room, but believe me, everything here is scientifically placed for the sound. The record shelves one on one wall dampen it in just enough way to give the room a natural life, and it makes everybody sound wonderful in recording.
my symphony, a masterpiece. I can hear you saying, what is that haunting refrain that I hear in the air? Here and there, everywhere. It's just a beautiful strain that keeps haunting my brain constantly. It's my melody. It's my symphony. Ink, a dink a dink, a dink a dink, a dink a dink. Oh, what a tune, what a tune, all oh, crooning. Ink, a dink a dink, a dink a dink, a dink a dink. It's got the whole.